Hey guys, hope you're having a fun day. I'm having a great day. It's so beautiful outside. Everyone's finishing up their exams, so everyone's relaxed. I'm currently going to go to 9th Street to get some food. I thought I'd bring you guys along with me. You guys can learn a little bit about Durham and then also, you know, appreciate, appreciate its beauty because it's a nice little town. One note though, Durham is not that big of a city. At least, like most things are not walking distance. Duke says it's like, oh, it's this amazing city, and it's really not. But it still has its own charm, and I'll show you. Right from East Campus, you can see Whole Foods. It's located very conveniently, which allows me to stop by for some bananas and other necessities. I'm always running into Duke students here. Located a little farther away, only like two blocks down from Whole Foods, is 9th Street. Right at the corner of 9th Street, you can find Picho Loco, which is the place to go for ice cream, and you can also find Cosmic Cantina, which has saved me from starvation countless of times. You have to walk up a flight of stairs, which also double as an obligatory Instagram picture to get to Cosmic. Open until 4 a.m., Cosmic is the go-to place for late night snacks, and you'll see a huge line leading out to the stairs to get some food. For me, the best time to come is before 11 p.m., when it still isn't too packed. But if you go later in the night, I recommend calling, so you can skip the line because it will literally be like a 30 minute wait. And here we finally get to 9th Street, which is the place for all Duke freshmen, and I suppose other Duke students too. We have barber shops, banks, amazing food, and cool little unique shops. I can personally attest to alpaca. Their arroz chapa is to die for. Happy and Hill also has an amazing reputation, although I've never been because alpaca is too awesome. People, mainly girls, like all girls, love that Starbucks is so nearby and they will order so much coffee from there, which I'll never understand. I don't drink coffee. This is the second barbershop we have, and we also have a Subway, which I used to be a big fan of until I discovered that their sandwiches aren't really that healthy, and I haven't been since. It's been two years. Now, ho, 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 I'd like to show you one of the hidden gems of Durham, Hunky Dory. Not only is Hunky Dory a blast to the past of times for record players and hip and grooviness, but their downstairs is the coolest hangout spot you could ever find. When me and my friends found it one time as we were exploring, we were hooked, and we spent a lot of time down here. There's so much you can do. Right next door is a classic bookshop, which I love. With the rise in technology and social media, books aren't getting the love and attention they deserve. I'm a big books guy. And I prefer books you can hold and smell as opposed to electronic stuff. Ooh, the selection was actually such a good series. I'm not much into boy drama and girl drama and drama, but for some reason, I could not stop reading that series. There's another really cool place for you people into aesthetics and decorations and looking pretty. Uh, I don't really know what's going on here, so I'm gonna just let the store speak for itself, you feel me? This is the mall of 9th Street, and I spend a lot of time here shopping at Harris Teeter, which is the grocery store. I prefer Harris Teeter over Whole Foods because their cranberry juice tastes so much better. That's literally the only reason. Uh, and I suppose the food is cheaper here because I have a membership, but if Whole Foods had good cranberry juice, I'd much rather go there because the walk is so convenient. Instead, I have to rent an electric scooter for 40 cents a minute to get to Harris Teeter so my thirst can be quenched, which I do so happily, unless my scooter breaks down or my phone dies. There have been many times I've been forced to walk with heavy groceries in both my hands all the way back to campus, against my will. Here are some more restaurants that make up 9th Street. People all love Moji Tea for their bubble tea, which is like tea with weird edible tasteless bubbles in them, and you have to widen your mouth over a big straw to suck up the bubbles. I'm not a fan, but like people like it, so there you go. Unfortunately, I've never ate here because I am broke, but I've only heard amazing things about Juju. It's a very nice Asian restaurant, although the serving sizes are small and it's expensive. Once my parents drop me off next year, I'm gonna make sure we eat here before they leave. Ben Rouge is a bougie Italian restaurant that I've also never been to because yet again, I am broke. If you're a flower guy or girl, this spot is an amazing place to get flowers. Unfortunately, I'm neither a flower guy or girl and actually have a talent for killing plants in the quickest time possible. My record is eight hours when I received the plant in my first class of the day, put it in my tote bag, open it up later to see the plant shriveled and dead because all the dirt had been knocked out. Yikes. Elmo's Diner is your classic breakfast diner, which I love. The breakfasts here are so much better than Marketplace, but uh, no hate to Marketplace. Actually, just kidding, there is some hate. I'm not a big fan of Marketplace. Chicken Bee is probably my favorite restaurant on all of 9th Street. The amount of times I've door dashed their chicken fried rice is uncountable. But I will say that my friends dragged me to the restaurant next door once, and that might be my new favorite place. It's a Vietnamese restaurant, and the food is not only so good and new, 
and they use rice noodles as pasta, but the serving sizes are huge, which is so important when you're a growing boy like me. Unfortunately, the place is closed on Wednesdays, which is the most random and saddest thing I've ever heard. So today I'm trying Zen Fish Poke Bar, which I've never been to, but my friends have always been talking about. I didn't even realize it was an actual bar that you picked me from and add to your bowl. Uh, I guess I should have known because that's kind of the name, but the food was really good, as is almost all food in Durham. Here's where the fun part begins. I'm taking a scooter down the main street, which is the other main street Duke students go to. The walk isn't too bad, but I'm naturally lazy and prefer to cruise on my scooters. Living on East Campus is much easier in terms of accessing Durham as opposed to West Campus, which is isolated in its own little forest. People wanting to go to Durham from West often have to take the bus to East and then walk from there. So I really shouldn't be complaining because I already live on East, but like still I'm going to complain. Scooters are the best. Anyways, my friends and I would mainly go here for the clubs. There are a few clubs Duke students would always go to. The main one's called Shooters 2, which is open Wednesdays and Saturdays to undergrads. There's another place called Divines, which is open on Thursdays. There's a train station on this street, which makes getting to Charlotte so convenient, which I love because that's where I'm from. That's where my family is, you know, if you feel me. It's a two and a half hour ride and a train ticket is only $25. Amazing. And there's so much like, I think I did a vlog about it. You guys should check it out for sure. There's this one secret spot that I love in Durham. It's this cool courtyard that is surrounded by beautiful trees and tall buildings. I mean, not that tall, but like cool buildings. And there's even a bull statue here. I love to just sit here and appreciate how I'm living my dream that I had as a younger kid to get into a top college. Fun times. Okay, now enjoy the ride back. 